first of the B-1s carried orthodox explosives like the V-2s which followed them. But the early ones could be range finders, and no one could tell if just one carried a different explosive in its warhead. The interception and destruction of every possible flying bomb became a desperate preoccupation. I was in London, in fact, during several air raids in 1943. I'd learned to ignore the shelters. But when the V-1 started in June 44, that was the first time that I became scared. Because the little information I had made me believe that they might be loaded with atomic bombs. It was the first time that I thought it might be a good idea to go to a shelter. I was told if I go to one of the big hotels, I might find pretty ladies in the negligees in the shelter. But I was disappointed. When I got down there, there was only one other person, a Chinese general. June the 6th, 1944, D-Day. But for the scientists, the strategic aims of the invasion were secondary. At last, they had a chance of finding what the German physicists had achieved. An Allied scientific mission went in close behind the armies, hunting for evidence of an atomic research program. Uranium supplies, reactors, calculation, anything. The scientific head of the mission was one of the Hitler refugees, Sam Goudschmidt. At the beginning, there were some difficulties and differences because of the different way of thinking and operating. For example, I received a very secret dispatch that I had to look for a physicist who had been in the United States. The information they gave me were his beer drinking habits, his opinion about American women, nothing about his physics, that he had had German measles in 1939, that he had been vaccinated against smallpox, a polyp in his right nostril, and only one testicle. With that information, I was supposed to find him. We ran across him later on in Berlin. I didn't check up on the details, however. The Alsos mission, as it was called, followed the armies over the Rhine and into Germany. For four months after D-Day, they searched and inquired without success. The question whether the Germans had an atom bomb program stayed unanswered. As I said before, I was scared that they had one. But when we came to Strasbourg, that was in November 1944, and found the files of Professor von Weizsäcker, the situation changed completely. I was very relieved. This paper showed definitely that they were way behind in the project, that they had not yet succeeded at that time to make an atomic reactor work. And in fact, I said to one of our officers, you know, it's really marvelous that they do not have an atomic bomb. Now we don't need to use ours. But he answered, Sam, you understand, of course, if we have a bomb like that, we are going to use it. If we have a bomb, we're going to use it. Once again, Leo Szilard was the first to see the danger and take action. The original letter he persuaded Einstein to sign was prompted by the fear of Hitler with an atom bomb. Like the other emigre scientists, he believed the justification of science was service to man. It was a denial of all their beliefs to make an atom bomb not as a countermeasure, but as an aggressive weapon. Again, Szilard went urgently to Einstein they composed another letter to Roosevelt warning him of the dangers of using the bomb, in particular the danger of America's vulnerability to nuclear attack. But they were too late. As Roosevelt's coffin was drawn through the streets of Washington, Einstein's letter still lay untouched on his desk. It was April 1945. Germany was broken and in ruins. Any remaining fears of an atomic bombardment by Hitler were swept away. If the scientists could have been sure of this when war broke out, the bomb would probably never have been begun. But now, while Germany crumbled, the bomb was nearing completion, the culmination of two and a half years' intensive work and millions upon millions of dollars. And there was still an enemy in the field. The destruction and humiliation of the chief enemy now presented the scientists and statesmen and military leaders with a new situation which prompted a new question. Should they still go on with the Manhattan Project? The main purpose of making an atomic bomb was not there anymore. This was uh, my general reaction, namely the uh, paramount purpose was to finish the war in Europe as fast as 
possible and to destroy Hitler. Once this had happened, uh, everything was somewhat of an anticlimax. And I remember very well that this was said very explicitly because we received uh, the news of the capitulation of Germany uh, while we were in the desert in Alamogordo to end uh, saw a test explosion with ordinary explosives. And uh, we had this explosion and then shortly thereafter we heard about the capitulation of Germany. The general reaction was, well, we missed the boat. In fact, I left um, Los Alamos in December 1944. I believe I was the first person to, to leave the project. Well, the reasons for this were quite uh, simple. Um, I mentioned before that uh, the reason why I started to work on the atom bomb was because I was afraid that Hitler may have to bomb and use it against us. And for this reason, it was important that we should have it too. But by that time, I became convinced that Hitler is not going to have to bomb. And we had various sorts of intelligence, various reports, which would indicate that this is unlikely, most unlikely to happen. The war with Germany was nearly uh, to close. After D-Day, I think it became clear that uh, the war would be finished. And therefore, the main, the prime reason for my working on this project has uh, ceased. Therefore, as soon as I became convinced of the, uh, about this, I asked for permission to, to leave, and I went back to England. When Truman succeeded Roosevelt at the White House, he didn't even know the Manhattan Project existed. He was hurriedly briefed by Henry Stimson, the Secretary for War. One of the first meetings arranged for the new president and commander-in-chief was a major discussion on the war with Japan. Everyone knew that in military and strategic terms, she was a beaten nation. On the other hand, her soldiers were still fighting fiercely. The question was, should the bomb be used? And if so, how? There were four courses open. Not to use it at all, to drop it on a nominated target in Japan after a warning, to invite Japanese observers to a demonstration in America, or just to drop it. 